Hi everyone, Mary here, and we're going to talk in this video a little bit about speed and its cousin, velocity. But we're going to start out with speed. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember, I think it was in elementary school, the very first time I started seeing speed velocity equations. Um, this is something you have, you, you understand deep in your soul, but what we're going to concern ourselves with is the difference between speed and velocity and how to work these simple but vital and important equations. As you know, speed is defined as how quickly an object moves over a distance. Um, if I asked you to name something that moved very fast and something that moved quite slow, I'm sure you could, you could come up with many, many examples of those. But speed, the real definition of it is the entire distance divided by the time it takes to cover that distance. Now we're talking distance, not displacement. So speed is a scalar. There is no direction involved in this. Um, I grabbed this map off the internet and they're talking about traveling from Minneapolis down to a Chicago suburb, suburb down here. And there is a all of these miles that are traveled and how many hours it took to get there. And all of this gets involved in and can be used to calculate speed. But speed doesn't care about direction. And it also doesn't indicate that this is going to be your speed consistently throughout the entire journey. Because when you go, if you've got in your car and traveled from Minneapolis down to Chicago, you would at times have a speed of zero. And that's because of the fact that somewhere you're going to stop at a stop sign. Um, along the trip, you may pass another car, zoom, on the highway. And your speed might get up you know, to 75 or 80 miles an hour on the highway. So when we say speed, it's the entire journey, the total distance, divided by the total time. It's not instantaneous speed, and there is no specific direction involved. Is this a useful equation? Absolutely, and we use it all over the place. But in physics, we tend to spend a little bit more time talking about velocity. Why? Because velocity is just a little bit more specific. We are going to have displacement per unit time. Now here's the equation for velocity. And whenever I give you an equation, um, I highly recommend that you write that down on your equation sheet. And whenever I give you an equation, I'm going to define the variables and the most common units used in the MKS system, meters, kilograms, and seconds, because those are the units we use the most often in physics. So velocity is change in displacement over change in time. Because displacement is a vector, and we're talking about the change of a vector over time, velocity is also a vector. Or in other words, it is speed plus direction. So if you're to describing a velocity, you would not say that an object is going 10 meters per second. Instead, you would say an object's going 10 meters per second south or it has a positive velocity of 10 meters per second, the positive indicating the direction. Or you might say it's 10 meters per second forward. There is lots of ways to indicate the directionness of a vector, but when you're dealing with velocities, you have to pay attention to that direction. There is a difference between, in, between instantaneous velocity versus average speed or velocity. Let's talk about each. Instantaneous speed or velocity is your speed at one instant in time. And as I mentioned about this journey from Minneapolis down to Chicago, during that trip, sometimes you're going to have a velocity of zero. Sometimes you're going to have a velocity that is very, very fast when you pass another car, for example. But that is just a quick moment in time. That's how fast you're going. That's not your average speed. Now, your speedometer tends to show you your instantaneous speed. How fast are you going at that moment? And when we're talking about smaller and smaller moments of time, as the time unit here gets smaller and smaller, then we get more exact and more specific about our instantaneous velocity. When you and I try and calculate how long it's going to take us to go from one place to another on a car trip, 
we're more concerned with average speed or average velocity, the total displacement and the total time, or if we're talking about average speed, the total change in distance divided by the total change in time. So average speed or velocity is going to involve a, a bigger journey, maybe changes of speed along the way, but we're going to care about that average. Instantaneous speed or velocity is at that one particular moment, how fast something's going. Now before we leave this idea, there's one more thing I want to make sure you get. If we're talking about a average speed or an average velocity, I will typically put a little straight line, put a little hat on top of velocity or a little hat on top of speed. And that little straight line over them is an indicator of average, meaning the speed could change from moment to moment to moment. But over the entire journey, the average speed was or the average velocity was. Now we're about to do a physics problem. And as we do this problem, there are specific ways that will help you set up physics problems. Um, I, I hate to break the news to you, but a lot of physics is story problems. And I have had hundreds of students through the years who've come to me and said, hey, I can do the math. I just don't know how to pick the equation and where to put the numbers. Well, that's what we're going to work on. How do you pick the equation and where do you put the numbers in the equation? So whenever we set up physics problems, these are the basic steps we're going to go through. The, the order might shift or change slightly from moment to moment or problem to problem. But the first thing we're always going to do is write down what you know. What do you know about the situation? And include units. Is the distance in kilometers? Is the displacement in meters? Is the displacement in miles? What exactly is going on? Often it's going to be helpful to draw a simple sketch. It doesn't have to be great art, just a simple sketch of what's going on. If there is motion in multiple directions, determining a direction that's going to be positive and a direction that's going to be negative. We have to establish which laws are we using, which principles are we using, or which equations we're using. This, as you can imagine, this is the heart of physics, and this is a lot of where we're going to spend our time during this course. When I talk about laws, it could be one of Newton's laws, principle of conservation of, of momentum, or a specific equation, which we'll have many of as the course goes on. Convert units. You cannot do math when some displacements are in miles and other displacements are in kilometers. These have to be the same before you can do math with those numbers. So often we're going to have to do some unit conversion. Then we put the numbers and the units into any equations that we have developed or we're using, and your final answer always has units attached. Now if you said gully, you sound like a broken record because you said units and units and units and units up here. Yes, I did, because units in physics are a big deal. And doing a problem correctly or incorrectly very often depends on making sure you are handling the units correctly. All right, let's do a physics problem together. I'm going to change pens here. And here's the problem we're going to do. Um, this gentleman, the, the great Olympian, uh, Usain Bolt, one of the greatest sprinters of all time, a August 16th, 2009, he set a world record for the 100 meter dash, the 100 meter race of 9.58 seconds. Um, and that the moment I am writing this problem, that record, which is about a decade old, has not been broken yet, which is phenomenal in the modern age of, of scientific sports. So my question is this. What is his average velocity as he ran this 100 meter race? And then I want to know what that is in miles per hour. So I'm going to start out with a very, very simple sketch. Now here is Usain Bolt. He is going to move through a displacement of 100 meters. And he's going to do that in a time of 9.58 seconds. And I want to know velocity. 
So his average velocity, average means I put that little hat over it to indicate average, is going to be the change in his displacement divided by change in time. And I apologize for these little upward squiggles. They pop up now and then. And yeah, they're kind of annoying to me too. Okay, so step one, draw a little sketch, write down what you know. The 100 meters, this is his displacement. This is the time. Then we take a look at units at the moment. We're not going to convert. We'll worry about that later. We choose the equation we're going to use. Average velocity is delta x over t. Then we put the numbers and the units into the problem. So 100 meters divided by 9.58 seconds. And his average velocity, now pick up your calculator. What's 100 divided by 9.58? And the answer I get is 10.4 meters per second. Now, how do I know it's three digits? Well, this is three digits, that's three digits, so my answer will have three significant digits. That's my average velocity. Now, why is this average? Because when Mr. Bolt took off from the beginning of this sprint, in the first nanosecond he was moving, was he moving at 10.4 meters per second? Well, of course not. It took him time to speed up. And then was he at a constant velocity for the entire race? Maybe. Probably at times during this rate, do you think that he was possibly faster than 10.4 meters per second? Probably, because it took time for him to speed up, and then he kept going at a probably a relatively fast rate. So that's why this is an average speed, because it probably changed a little from the beginning to the end. Now the problem itself also says, what is his velocity in miles per hour? So I have to convert that to a set of units that the problem wants it in. So I'm going to go back to setting up my TIE Fighters. 10.4 meters per second, nice straight line. I want to get rid of meters and go to miles. And because I've been doing this a long time, I know there are 1609 meters in a mile. Those are going to cancel. I'm going to circle miles because that's an indicator to me that says don't mess with miles, you're done with it. And then I'm going to get rid of seconds and go to hours. Now how many seconds are in an hour? 3600. How do I know that? Well, I know that because there are 60 seconds per minute, and then there are 60 minutes per hour. So if I want to go directly from seconds to hours, 60 times 60 is 3600. So when I cross seconds out, I've got miles on the top, hours on the bottom. Then I pick up my calculator and do the math. I end up with 23, oops, 23.3 miles per hour, and that is his average velocity. Now we made a big deal on about direction. What direction is he going? Well, this is a positive number indicating that he is going in the positive or forward direction. The positive negative direction stuff as the problems get trickier, that's going to get trickier as well. All right, folks, that will do for this one, and we will see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>